Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for the second webinar on Go Living Digital Masterclass. As the world moves towards the digitized operation in all the business sectors, there are lots of confusion booming around it. To address such situations and queries, cyber media research, sea change, and BT and BT together are organizing this series of masterclass, Lean Digital Transformation. Today's masterclass is specially on the how to digitize your business and five phases of the journey. Hello, I am Shayan De, Senior Editor at Cyber Media Research. I am going to be your host for the session today. We already did a masterclass on this series back in July, and the response was overly overwhelming, I must say. I know some of your today's attendees have already attended in the last webinar, and I am welcoming them with my warm heart for the engagement they showed last time and putting the trust in us again. I hope you guys found it useful. And let's go ahead for the uh, today's webinar. Before we proceed further, please note that for the overall session today, all the participants will only be in the listen only mode. If you have any sort of question, then please post them directly in the chat window in front of you. We will do a quick QA session at the end of the masterclass. In the masterclass, we got a lot of questions from the attendees. Because of time limitations, we are unable to answer all of this. But most of the relevant and unique questions will be answered. I'm expecting some sort of really interesting engagement from the attendees today. So to briefly set the context for today's session, we all know the pandemic made the digital transformation an immediate need. So any plans to go through any digital transformation over the next few years had to be done immediately. Now that we are hopefully coming out of the pandemic, it is time for every enterprise to rethink that the digital transformation strategy and how to overcome all the shortcomings of it. Our session today focuses on the concept of lean digital transformation especially and the main five phases for it. We will also talk about how to incorporate digitization in your business and how to achieve a better ROI. This is easier said than done, of course, and many questions need to be answered, many confusions need to be addressed. So, and that is why this webinar today. To address such questions on different phases of digital transformation and how it can be incorporated in our day-to-day -day business operations, it is my pleasure to introduce you to our expert speaker today, Mr. V. Srinivasa Rao, also professionally known as VSR, the Chairman and Managing Director of BT and BT. Welcome, Mr. Rao, and thank you for joining us today. Yeah, good, good afternoon. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Before I hand over the screen to you and the uh, attendees to you, allow me to give a brief introduction about you to our attendees, especially to those who are new today. Mr. Rao has 26 years of diverse experience in IT industry and has worked in senior executive positions at Indian IT majors like Infosys, TCA, IGET Solutions, Satyam, Tech Mahindra. He is a business leader, a renowned speaker, an author, and a techno social entrepreneur. He has authored a great book named Lean Digital Thinking, which you can read on Amazon Kindle. He also acts as the chief digital officer, consultant, and advisor at BTNB. Welcome again, Mr. Rao. All the screen and the attendees are over to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. So, good afternoon. And uh, probably, if anybody from other countries, good morning to everyone. Uh, thanks for joining this session today. Uh, I'm going to speak something very interesting uh, the how part of uh, digitalization. In the previous session, in the master series, we are calling this as a Go a Lean Digital. So why we are calling it Lean Digital is the digitalization uh, or the digital businesses which you design, build, and operate will be very expensive because they are fat. So you need to bring the lean aspects into the digital enterprises. Lean is not new. It was there in 19, I think, 03 at Ford without the name of Lean. After that, most of the Japanese companies mastered in the Lean. 1990s, it became more popular. Toyota type of companies really mastered in that. But all the Lean, what we spoke was in the context of probably second and third industrial revolutions. Now we are in the fourth industrial revolution where we need to contextualize the Lean for the digital businesses and digital enterprises. Hence, it is very important for us to build the lean digital enterprises, not just digital enterprises. So now I think we are here to speak about uh, 
So how do you digitalize your business? I mean, this is nothing new. Most of the people think that what is so different we speak today. But I would like to share how I translated my experience into a life cycle. So for everything, there is a life cycle. Even for the human life, we have the life cycle. Right? For a software development, you have the life cycle. If you want to uh, build a space uh, ship, you have a life cycle. So without having the life cycle, it is very difficult for us to succeed, whether it is in the digital transformation or other business transformations or any other transformations. With that note, uh, very quickly, I would like to refresh. Of course, in the last session also, we spoke very detailed. But today, if any new members are there for their benefit, I would like to refresh the context behind this uh, digitalization, digital transformation, and so on and so forth. So what is happening in the last 10 plus years, I think if you look at, there is something, a fusion happening. That is information technology, uh, operational technology, communication technology, collaboration technology. So if you are from uh, the pharma and life sciences, you also talk about the biotechnology. So the beauty here is all these things getting converged, the fusion happening. Unlike in the past, if you look at, I came from IT industry and some people probably come from operational industry, operational technology industry, like uh, Siemens or Caterpillar or Philips, they mostly talk about machine to machine sensors, all those electronics and embedded software at the mind. And there are communication and collaboration technologies like uh, 3G, 4G, 5G, 6 low pans and social media and all. So when all these three got converged, there is a lot of complexity emerging. And unfortunately, or fortunately, we as technology professionals cannot speak now, I am from IT, I am from OT, I am from CT. We are from technology space. We have to deal with all the these technologies and that too, the intersection of these technologies. Look at there at the right side. So this intersection or fusion, I call it as the modern cyber system when multiple technologies got merged. So this modern cyber system, if you look at, there is information technology, so many new technologies are there, artificial intelligence, machine learning, digital twins, so on and so forth, edge computing, for example, blockchain, communication technologies, you have IPv6, 5G, then short range networks like LoRaWAN, Zigbee, six low pan, Bluetooth, unified communications, then collaboration, you have social media, then you have metaverse, for example, today. That's becoming very, very popular. Operational technologies, you have IoT, then 3D printing, unmanned vehicle, and so on and so forth. Then what does it mean when this convergence happens? And why everybody is talking about digitalization? We have to digitalize. In fact, I started talking probably a decade back. But today, everybody is, I think, if we don't digitalize, probably it will be very difficult for us to survive, sustain, and all. Why they are speaking today? Why they are too much focusing, starting from board of directors, CXOs, business heads, and all? It's not the cup of tea of just CTOs and CAOs. The reason is this convergence has created unimaginable new capabilities, which was not possible with one single technology like IT or CT or OT and all. When the convergence happened, the new capabilities got emerged. Number one, if you look at today, we can work very closely with the digital workforce like chatbots, bots, robots smart contracts and things and all, which was not the case. That means there is a digital workforce, there is a human workforce, and both working together. I imagine the productivity and operational excellence. This is the new capability. The second capability is omnipresent. That means anywhere, anytime, using any device. You can do remote operations. You can offer remote services. You can monitor remotely, whatever. You want to provide information. It doesn't matter, right? And then the next one is, Intelligent things, we are able to give life to things because of IoT. The things means the car or machine or equipment or any object. It could be a bed sheet. It could be a baby diaper. It doesn't matter. So the sensors are there. The embedded software is there. And then the communication mechanism. So all these things, because of these technologies, a physical object is able to sense, able to think, process, communicate, even able to predict it. So that is the reason you are getting now the digital workforce 
and the human interventions are getting optimized. So I call that as autonomous operations happening. This is a new capability where a lot of things can be done very, very faster. Then human intelligence is limited. Whatever the reason it is, now artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning algorithms are augmenting our intelligence and able to even see the future. Look at the predicting the future and also able to take the decisions based on the future scenarios. We can simulate, we can predict. This is another new capability. Then you don't need to travel. You can sit at your home. You can have all the communication, collaboration, innovations, learning. So the real-time communication collaboration is possible today with uh, uh, video conferencing or telepresence or Microsoft Teams or Zooms and all whatever. Then most importantly today, the new capabilities are because of these microservices or APIs and all, it's not just your organization. You can expand your organization with an ecosystem of partners with ease of integration with our suppliers, partners, and others. So don't you think if these new capabilities got emerged with the convergence of IT plus ET plus OT plus plus plus, there is a lot of pressure on our organizations which have been there for last 100 years or 50 years. They, I, I call them as digital immigrants. And they are sandwiched between digital dragons and digital lizards. The digital dragons are bringing these new capabilities getting into the digital immigrants' businesses. For example, the dragons are Google, Apple, Microsoft, Facebook, Amazon, or GAFM. They are getting into commercial industries. Google is into automotive industry. Apple is getting into that. Samsung and Apple just simply invaded this watch industry, what not. Then digital lizards, they are the tech startups, FinTech, HealthTech, GovTech, what not. So when all these things, and also in our own business, if you are from manufacturing or healthcare or banking, those people who are progressive, those organizations which are progressive are able to embrace this digitalization and these capabilities. So you are now sandwiched as a digital immigrant between these three. If you don't wake up and understand what needs to be done with these new capabilities, I think the time to extinct is very limited. So with that note, let me sell now what is happening with all these things. There is a new capabilities got emerged. And with these technological innovations of IT and CT and OT and all, your customer expectations got changed. I'm sure you see the customer five years back and today they expect their, any services, information from anywhere, anytime using any device. They have less tolerance. They can make your company brand completely goes outside within fraction of minutes. You can blast them. You can voice out your opinion. And the purchase decisions are not based on one or two guys they discuss with. Internet, if I go even for movies today, you know that. If I want to see a movie, I go to internet and see what the thousands of people are talking about it. The purchase decisions are changing. And the customers are more knowledgeable than your product, than your sales team and marketing team. Because they have a lot of knowledge available in the internet. So your customer is changing. You need to understand your customer. The second one is your competition. I already talked about it. GAFM, the digital dragons, digital lizards. And from your own industry, the competition is changing. The third important thing which we spoke about is the uh, physical and digital worlds. That means you are, you are working with now digital workforce, chatbots, bots, robots, and the real-time communication, collaboration. So... The physical and digital worlds are getting converged. The human interventions are optimized. So with these things, then the customer change, your competition is really fierce, and your operations are completely getting impacted because of this physical and digital world convergence. The only solution for all organizations is to digitalize. There is no choice. But is it easy? No. Unfortunately, 70% of digital initiatives are failing. And it is very alarming. Millions of dollars are spent. While we all know that the digitalization is required because of the customers, what they, they expect, competitions, or the convergence of physical and digital worlds, the three Cs, but the reality is different. So why, why all these things, I think, happening? Why these failures? A few of my experience sharing here, 
starting from board of directors to the bottom most level, there is no common digital mission or vision purpose, and there is no common vision and goals. That is a. I think if you ask anybody in your organization, for example, uh, somebody say it is digitization, somebody say it is digitalization, somebody say it is digital transformation. There is a complete confusion. I think what is the mission behind this? Are you going for digitization or digitalization? Or digital transformation. I will explain that the difference. Then lack of clarity. What to digitalize? Do I want to digitalize my process like supply chain or customer relationship, or do I want to digitalize my workplace like a shop floor, or do I want to digitalize my product? What to digitalize? And why to digitalize? Already clear, which we discussed. But that also not many organizations clear because my competition is doing. I go no. You need to look at holistic. And then how to digitalize? That is what our focus today. So that clarity is missing in most of the organizations. Now there is a lot of change happening, but unfortunately, organizations have not prepared to accept that change. Unlike in the past, we must be very agile. So the change is very rapid because the customers are looking for continuous newness. So your organization structure, your operating model is rigid, not flexible. I think, and also you are not able to understand the changing needs. Then the projects fail, or the existing projects fail, or you may fail to identify new programs and projects for the digitalization. Then lack of understanding of digital is competition, and uh, uh, unable to cope up with the speed at which the technologies are evolving. You look at blockchain in the last couple of years, how it got evolved very, very speed, super fast. Then huge gap in the digital technology expertise and also digital business expertise. Ninety-eight percent or ninety-five percent employees are from business side. Do they have the digital business expertise, not the technology expertise? Okay, so that is the biggest challenge today. Without baselining the current digital state, it is very unfortunate people wants to start the digitalization, but they don't know where they are. And where they want to be, they might be clear. But if you don't know where you are, then how do you go where you want to be? It may take ten years or five years, right? So you have to know that. But unfortunately, not assessing or knowing the current digital state. Then the most important challenge here is cynicism, denial attitude towards digitalization, and fear of failure, resistance to change, and cultural barriers. And finally, especially for the mid-sized companies, the budget and investment challenges are. So I think with all this uh, background, what is required here, I think, is we. Uh, I basically spend a lot of time based on my experience. So the lean digital business excellence model. Last time I explained very quickly. I'll uh, run through this. So for any organization, there are twelve building blocks. That is very important. So what to digitalize? If somebody asks, there are twelve building blocks needs to be digitalized. But which one you have to digitalize? That you have to decide based on so many factors that we'll discuss. And traditional thinking and digital execution ensures successful failure. You need to acquire digital mindset. That's where the twelve lean digital thinking principles and five lean digital lean digitalization phases, which I'm going to speak now. Very quickly, these are all the twelve building blocks. If somebody asks you what to digitalize, whether it is a vision, business model, a strategy, or outcomes, or products, services, workplaces. It is not just only processes, or it is not just only the workplaces. So you need to decide what to digitalize. And these are all the principles. Well, we explained in the last session in very detail. I am not getting in. If you don't understand and imbibe these principles into your brain, you think traditionally. If you want to start thinking digitally, these all principles are very important. Now let us come to. I think I spent 15 minutes just to uh, set the tone. Because for the new members, but remaining, I think, 30 minutes we'll speak about the today's session. So, how to digitalize is very, very important. As I mentioned, the life cycle is very, very clear. Here, look at here. So, first we have to inspire, then you have to assess, innovate, experiment, institutionalize. This is an encapsulation of my experience of executing the digital transformation programs with new customers. Or some of uh, my things which I did in my previous organizations, right? Let us go now one by one. Okay, what is this inspire? 
So most of the times, I think uh, what happens is uh, uh, organizations start the digital transformation programs very well, but are they doing these important activities or what? The life cycle phase one I'm talking about is inspire. So without this inspired phase, organization fail to define what is the pace of digitalization we want. You cannot take up the work which you can't chew. I think the pace of digitalization is very important. And without inspired phase, different units and organizations might be having different goals. There might not be common mission. So then there will not be any synergy, only energies will be there. You can't really synergize those energies then you may not get really the required outcome. So the inspired phase is very, very important in any organization. So what we cover here, number one. So have you understood in the inspired phase, you have to ensure that as an organization, whether it is sales team, marketing team, or your operational team, whoever, I think you need to understand the changing needs and wants. It's only just understanding at a higher level. What is the customer buying behavior? Are they doing, looking for continuous newness? What their needs, wants, expectations? I think that understanding is very important in this space. That means the customer is very, very important. Then what market trends and shifts happening? Maybe your market intelligence team is doing that. But are you able to digest it and getting the required encapsulated intelligence which will be helpful for your organization to move in the right direction of digitalization, understand the market, trends and shifts. Now, within our organization, there are so many stakeholders and external stakeholders, internal stakeholders. You need to understand what their expectations and pain points before even you start a digitalization. Then, very, very important thing is, okay, I understand customer, I understand market trends and shifts, I understand stakeholders' pains and their expectations, but what is the management direction after understanding this? Is there any management direction exists? If not, we have to set it here. Then what are the limitations? What is the leadership bandwidth? What is the budget availability? What resources availability? And whether we have that much capability to absorb required change, right? All those limitations also needs to be clear in the inspired phase, which will help you to decide what is the pace at which we can take the digitalization. We cannot just simply start, okay, just like that. Then the most important thing which I showed in the previous three slides, all organization, if you have 100,000 employees or 50,000 employees or 5,000 employees, it doesn't matter. Every employee must understand what to digitalize, what is lean digital mindset or a digital manifesto, how to digitalize an abstract level, maybe three hours or four hours or one hour session to ensure that everybody speak the same language and there is a common understanding of digitalization in the organization. That's where I, I just introduced here a lean digital business excellence model. That was the first session which we did it in detail. If you get some time, you can go through that video. Then, do we have at least the foundational cultural elements to kickstart digitalization? I think there is a very, very critical elements for the digitalization required. First thing is the digitalization, I think the change is something very, very rapid. People should not say that how many times you change it, Yesterday you said one requirement. Today you are giving me too many requirements. I think that is fact of life. Nobody can say that the requirements are for a frozen. Maybe that was in our generation. Requirements might change in the evening or tomorrow. So I think there are some pivotal cultural elements needs to be established before even you kickstart the digitalization. Mm -hmm. Then how do you co-create the digital mission? That is the common digital purpose for your organization. All the senior leaders and key stakeholders, they must speak same language. They must have the common vision across all the units and functions. Then after this, in the inspired phase, you also know the limitations. You also know what really we can do. Then you, before you getting into the next phase, I don't want to assess the whole organization, the 12 building blocks, which I have shown from the previous slides. Look at here. So is it? really required to assess these 12 building blocks? I want to assess vision, business model, strategy, outcomes, product. No. You know who is our customer, you know who is our competition, what is happening in the market, trends and shifts, so stakeholders, expectations. And you also know the management direction and limitations. Based on that, you decide, I think currently it is better we digitalize the workplaces and processes. That might be enough. And that is the core crux of inspired phase. 
without inspired phase you don't know where you are going and you don't you also don't have the common purpose okay i think that's i think very very important phase one then what is next the next phase is very very important as i mentioned without me knowing where am i i cannot set the benchmark i want to become the president of india it is my benchmark but where am i i am just sitting in hyderabad as an industrialist or a business professional but my baseline is the lowest level and i cannot become president at the present reference point so i should know what my baseline today if i want to become something like a president maybe it is a 15 years journey or 12 years journey or whatever it is you have to put a lot of efforts right so i think you need to know what is that where you are in the ss space okay without knowing uh where you are that is the current state of your organization the precisely the digital state of your organization you fail to identify the current uh, the correct problems and possibilities where you assess your organization it's not only the problems it is also possibilities and hence you are not able to assess the volume of work and uh, also what budget is required what resources are required what is that value you have to create to move from the current state to benchmark state you fail so you have to know the current state then only you can really decide if i want to move from the current digital state to the benchmark digital state this much budget required this many resources are required these are all the problems needs to be resolved these are all the possibilities needs to be translated to opportunities then only your digitalization will be successful so in this phase what we do we get into more details now in the inspire phase you might just understand now in the ss phase this is the most critical phase of digitalization so look at here nowadays everybody is asking for personalized experiences so you have to understand your customers your employees your partners your suppliers what are the voice of these particular stakeholders their complaints their appreciations their suggestions their ideas and most importantly their emotions without understanding the emotions you cannot provide the personalized experiences so this is a very very important part of your assessment the second important assessment if you want to further go detailed assessment of the emotional needs then why the design thinking is becoming popular is you want to empathize the customers or users or stakeholders understand their emotional needs by observation so this is a very very important element of assessment the third important point here is you have so many systems already maybe crm system your procurement system supply chain system production system there are so many software applications are there i think a lot of data is available so you have to understand you might be having some reports and dashboards from that you have to infer what problems and what possibilities are there or you have to apply some artificial intelligence machine learning algorithms on the available data of your systems on the top of that and you derive the insight that means what are the patterns of my business what are the signals it is giving me based on the data of the existing business that is another important element of assessment and you have to assess the external environment what is the market trends and shifts if any political social economic technological okay and what is the new competition is coming in from the gafam from the digital lizards and from my own organization you have to assess that then you have to assess the real digital state this is where i emphasized uh, we introduced something called like iq and eq a lean digital quotient of an organization or lean digital quotient of a particular building block like the process what is the lean digital quotient of a supply chain process or lean digital quotient of crm process or lean digital quotient of your business model lean digital quotient of uh, your service so what is the importance of this particular element is when you find the lean digital quotient maturity you know what digital strengths you have what digital weaknesses you have so by consolidating all this the first second third fourth fifth blocks here i have given the rectangles you are finally baselining the current problems and possibilities of your organization this is the huge inventory of problems and possibilities why you are doing all this exercise is just to identify the right problems and possibilities it's not just by sitting in my office and finding the problems i have to have the better source to find the problems and possibilities 
and those sources are shown here so after this baselining current possibilities and uh, problems now you prioritize them and see that okay what is the best digitalization path my organization must choose okay probably to solve these problems maybe my process one should be digitalized or the workplace must be digitalized or i have to change the business model i think that's enough probably that is the digitalization path you are deciding finally of course any organization without having the business case nobody can really uh, uh, approve it so you have to uh, make sure that after assessment a business case is created and get the approval so but to create the business case look at how much hard work you have to do this is the ss phase then ss so i have to just again pictorially what are i spoke to bit here i i want just to give you some terminology don't worry about it so this is the benchmark this is the baseline and to move from here to here we call it as a digital transformation so in our framework whatever i basically documented this in my book also which i'll show you at the end of the session so the digitalization are you doing the digitalization at the instance level or building block level or a cluster level or organization level again all depends on as i mentioned after your assessment after your assessment so you have to see that so just see here example so in the previous slides i talked about building blocks business vision model strategy outcomes if you want to group these four i call it as a cluster that is a digital business blueprint some of the organizations might want to start digital business blueprint then what they have to do they have to assess where they are today that means they have to assess their digital their existing business vision their existing business models their existing business strategy uh, their existing business outcomes the total thing we call it as the digital business blueprint then you have to find what are the digital strengths and weaknesses are there then you want to get into the cluster 2 products and service innovations then you have to assess your digital products it could be a small bed sheet or a chair or a car or the digital services it could be a banking service or healthcare service or all this is the second cluster okay you can assess and the third cluster is operations in the operations we are talking about the workplace it could be let us say one example i want to give you so look at here i spoke about cluster i talked about building block but i never spoke what is an instance let us look at this workplace is a building block the instances could be in my organization if i am manufacturing company a factory is one instance warehouse is one instance service center is one instance showroom is showroom is one instance that means the digital workplace building block has these many instances of workplaces it's not just one workplace right if you take the business process okay somebody ask you have you digitalized your business process it is not simply uh, as i have digitalized you have to look at maybe there are 12 business processes in our company some of the examples i have given here sem crm plm what you digitalize what you assess right and if you look at the business operating model where operating model for your uh, region might be different middle east uh, business for example or operating model for tractors business might be different operating model for the cars business might be different so you have to assess all these things so those things are called instances okay so summary here is when you are assessing you need to look at as an organization you want to assess the cluster or you want to assess the building block or you want to assess one simple instance of your building block if you start small start at the instance level from all these things what are you doing digital strengths that is the possibilities you can derive from that and digital weaknesses that's where you have to define the problems this is the matrix i i told you how to find that so these are all the twelve building blocks which we explain for any organization which are i think uh, business model strategy and all and previously i also explained to you lean digital thinking manifesto okay last session we had a very detailed discussion on so that manifesto has four principles so every building block or every instance here crm instance we have to do. the crm instance is assess against these four principles look at here so that means what is the digital intensity of my crm process if this particular process doesn't have these principles embedded within it is not embracing those principles then that's not digital 
That means the quotient might be lower. That means it could be rendered or opportunist or emergent or cultivated. So this is what the real assessment. For this, we built like an ISO type of a standard. Uh, CMMI like of a standard or Malcolm's Balanced National Quality Award like of a standard. So this particular framework has 630 lean digital practices, very comprehensive assessment. That means this process CRM, if I have to assess, there are 60 best practices which we defined, which needs to be there. If you say that I am digital, uh, the CRM process is digital, we will check against the 60 lean digital practices, check everything. If it is uh, having that uh, practice, it is a strength. If it doesn't have, it is the weakness. So this is a very important element. We invested a lot. In fact, personally, I invested my time, effort, and experience translated. So sometimes some people want, okay, leave all these things. I just want to provide unforgettable moments of experience to my stakeholders. Look at here, I'm highlighting uh, the last but three here. Deliver, design, deliver unforgettable moments of experience to stakeholders. So this is a principle, Lean Digital Manifesto. This principle, I want to check against all the building blocks, whether this principle is there in my vision, is it embedded and integrated within my business model so that I can offer at, uh, unforgettable moments of experience to my customers? Do I have my strategy to have that? Do I have my KPIs and outcomes to be point to measure whether I am giving the better experience to customers or not? Have I designed my products to provide better experience? Have I designed my workplaces? Have I designed my processes? Look at here. So if you want to provide unforgettable moments of experience, it is not just simply drawing some customer journey map and designing the experience. You need to holistically look at all the building blocks and see that the whole anatomy of organization is embedded with this particular principle. Okay, so that's where I call it as a digital readiness of an organization to provide this particular unforgettable moments of experience and digital intensity of CRM to perform better. These are all the two dimensions we need to understand when we talk about lean digital quotient or lean digital quotient finder. So I also told we have to collect, uh, this is a tool. I think this is a very <laughs> sophisticated tool we developed to assess, as I mentioned here, look at this total assessment, cluster wise, building block wise, instance wise, whatever you want that will be configured in the software tool. Finally, you get an excellent strength and weakness report and the dashboards and all, you get where you are. In addition to that, there is also another tool required, not this, but I'm giving you an example. How do you get the voice of customers and emotions of the customers? So I personally spend a lot of time to collect even the emotions. That means they are happy, unhappy, angry. So when they ask, they give the suggestions or they give the complaints, they give the uh, appreciations, they also can express, I'm happy, I'm unhappy, I'm angry. So I think that's what I think you need to collect the voice and emotions of the customer. So I spent a very quality time in assessment because without assessing, uh, any digitalization journey is half boiled and it will not give you the right results. Okay. Okay. You assess it now. You are clear about the problem statements, right? Then you need to double analyze those problem statements and prioritize them, uh, problems and possibilities. Now the real innovation starts here. One is you have to identify now the projects and programs for the digitalization. So this much work to be done to define the digital transformation or digitalization programs and projects. So after assessment, you are able to define now, okay, I am prioritizing, these are all the problems and possibilities. If I group these five problems probably to solve that, let me make that as one program and that will be having a, another two, three projects in that. The total, even programs and projects identification also an innovation in my view. You cannot identify wrong problems wrong programs and projects. So you have to innovate. What are the digital programs and uh, uh, projects and the benefits which are derived from those programs and projects needs to be clear in the innovation. Next one, because the change is constant and instant and your organization must be agile, flexible. So any of these digital transformation programs and projects must be driven in my view as tech startups. The reason is tech startups are very, very risk taking. They respond to the changes pretty faster. If you want to have such type of an environment in an organization which has been there last 50 years and 40 years or 30 years, 
they are not able to digest that much change. So you need to establish an intrapreneurial ecosystem, very, very focused, and have the internal startups and drive these programs and projects like startups. Okay, when you establish a startup, then the innovations could be solving one problem or two problems, very simple, finding the solutions. It is start small. I don't want to go bigger transformation. Uh, very good, you identified 500 problems and probably 300 possibilities. My dear friend, I don't have that much budget. You address these three problems, okay, that's fine. Then how do you innovate the digital solution to solve that one or two problems? Then somebody may say, no, 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 I want to innovate the whole business blueprint for the next three years. I want to see the vision. I want to see the complete blueprint of my digitalization. Then you have to look at what is that digital business vision, business models, and the business strategies and outcomes, how do you innovate? So you need to have innovative business models. Unfortunately, we are not able to give from India the innovative digital models. Even IIMs are there, ISBs are there. We are copying from United States. Ola is from Uber. Flipkart is from Amazon. So we need to innovate. And the same thing applies for your organization, if not the country. So are you able to innovate the new business models, new business strategies, and even the KPIs, the key performance indicators to measure the success of your digital businesses. Then you need to innovate digital products and services. You need to innovate digital operations, means the processes, the digital supply chain process you want to innovate. Everything depends on the project and program. What is the program and project you define and the scope you define? Any of these possibilities exist, the innovation perspective. So you want to innovate a supply chain process, or you want to innovate a shop floor, or you want to innovate something like an operating model. That means the organization structure has to be completely reinsured to enable this digitalization. Then you want to completely innovate your digital technology blueprint, which is not IT or CT or OT separately. It is a combination. So you need to look at how do you innovate your digital technology foundation, maybe digital technology strategy, digital technology governance, which talks about DevSecOps. Site reliability engineering, LC, NC, what not, right? There are so many AML for testing, right? So IT governance doesn't work. You need to look at the digital technology governance. And architecture, IT is 33.3%. Probably OT is 33.3%. CT is 33.3%. But I need to have the architecture not just for IT, OT, or CT separate. I need to have an integrated architecture. So this much work needs to be done. Most importantly, you must innovate our culture. And you need to design the change. What is the baseline of our company today? If I want to innovate and implement all these things without changing my organization culture and without changing the attitude and behaviors and skills, I will not move. You, you have to innovate that in this stage. So that's, I think, the third phase of digitalization. Then the next one is, okay, we innovated now. I innovated some strategy or a process or a product or a service or a workplace, that's fine. But you have to experiment. When you innovate, there are so many unknowns. When you design a solution or when you come up with a strategy, never go in a big bang approach. The solution could be big, which you design. The strategy could be bigger picture it is giving, but you divide that into small chunks and experiment, experiment, pivot, pivot, reach some stage where you reach. That means you have to fail fast, you have to fail uh, small, and then you can scale up faster, right? So that's where I call this as an experimentation zone. So you have to look at now, there are five or 10 startups. That means the programs and projects are there. If you have to rationalize them in the beginning, as for the budget and other things, look at them. Okay, as for the uh, solutions, I needed 15 startups, but let's start with three startups because the three programs are uh, projects what it is. Then you must have your internal digital technology tools, software, infrastructure as a service to enable the solutions are built in the form of applications or devices, whatever it is. So it is like your internal AWS or HO. Uh, it could be uh, you are in public or you might set it up yourself, whatever. Because without this particular technology tool, software and infrastructure, it is very difficult to uh, build the digital solutions in the form of software. And then you need to have a very sophisticated system for the design, develop, integrate, test, release, this, this, all these digital software and embedded softwares, and then pivot that into a minimum viable products, right? Then, as I mentioned, 
driving all these programs as a startup is very important in the experiment. The reason is change is instant and constant. Any changes are coming in, you should be able to absorb them. That's where you have to program manage them as startups. Most importantly, one of the, I think, uh, a company where I uh, addressed and uh, did some workshop for their topmost guy, CXO, and uh, the chief general managers and all, it is a 60,000 crore company. Their problem is not digitalization. They are not able to operationalize the outputs of the digital programs and projects. People are not using, the customers are not using, the employees are not using. What is the point to spend millions of dollars on the programs and projects and finally, you are not able to operationalize and the stakeholders are not using them. So in the experiment phase, you also need to be ready. The operationalization, how I have to do. Okay. So this is what the experiment. And last phase is institutionalized, that is operationalization. Right. So this is very, very important. A lot of change management required. Okay. It is like operation successful, but patient did not recover from illness. You should not be like that. That's where the institutionalization phase people play a very uh, important role, the change must be managed, the culture and skills must be nurtured. This is not at the end. When you start the program and project, there is you have to plan for it, right? So I think uh, you need to establish an office of operationalization and you need to operationalize your solutions and the software applications, whatever you built and whatever the assets you build, whatever the devices you uh, probably uh, tested, you have to implement here and the infrastructure you have to put it here. Then you have to train all the stakeholders. Then you have to manage the change, which is the complex part. That's where we fail. And we need to really look at now, once it is operationalized, maybe three months we started using, are the real benefits which we define, the digital benefits. You say that when I digitalize the CRM, my retention will go up, my probably new segments I can open, and my revenue will go up. Are they really happening? You have to monitor it after the institutionalization. Finally, if something is not going fine or going fine, you need to do the root cause analysis and address leave you. So I think that's what today I think I explained here. Uh, what is that all now? These five phases, there is a playbook required, which we define. This is what my targeting two years of my hard work. So there must be a playbook for the uh, your inspire, assess, innovate, experiment, institutionalize, and the tools must be there for the digital transformation. Okay. So that's it. Uh, so let me, another five minutes, I will summarize. Having said this, one important element I would like to emphasize here is, while these five phases are very important for you to digest, understand, and implement, the technology department, the CIO organization, and the CTO with the help probably, is the lifeline for the whole digital transformation. So they have to look at now, moving from this IT mindset, the CIO mostly dealt with IT in the past. They have not dealt with uh, all these operational technologies in the past. Maybe partly they dealt with communication technologies, collaboration a little bit at all. Now you look at here the right side, the changing role and capabilities of IT department. You have to move from information technologies to, to digital technology. So my sincere advice to everyone is change your, I think, IT. You can never speak now. It is IT era is dead. You are in a technology era. Maybe you call digital technology or process technology. So change that. We name your IT department to a technology department or a digital technology department. Because a lot of things are changing at the right side you look at because of this technological convergence. And the software applications today, some are dealing with processes for the last 50, 60 years. That's where the systems of records and new applications are added. They are dealing with people's emotions, that is systems of engagement. And the new applications got added, which are dealing with the physical objects like cars, machines, equipment, tools. They are systems of things. And these three systems are giving humongous amount of data, then you need to have systems of intelligence. So all these categories of software applications are required if you want to be successful, if you want to implement the solutions and strategies you design in the innovate phase. And the experimentation requires these, I think, four types of different applications. All right, the operationalization also, if you look at, I have given some, um, I think, framework here. If you have all these things like your software, has, whatever you develop, end of the day, the digital solution implementation happens through your software embedded or business or your infrastructure. So you have any purpose and benefits. There is a business and technology alignment. There is a business engagement, organization's ability, culture, quality, rewards and recognition. Then it's fine. 
if your software purpose is missing it is directionless if your technology and business guys are not aligned this is the benefits will never get realized and our business is not engaged they think it is not my cup of tea it is only technology teams tea that is a blame game then your organization doesn't have the ability then it is a burnout and the culture is not there it is a disengagement and quality is really bad then it is a frustration and there are no rewards and recognition it is inertia why the operationalization fail i think these are all the very important elements needs to be factored okay a role based skills like from all employees to the board level you have to build the skills to summarize first i open with my session somebody talk about digitalization somebody talk about digitalization somebody talk about digital transformation let me give the clarity last 40 50 years digitalization is there it is just very simple very simple scanning of documents is a digitization photography is a digitized or our ppts or words are all digitized documents so the automation era in the last 50 years plus which we are using the it for automation or ot for automation there all the digitized the scan documents or uh, photos and other things and all you are using them as a part of your automation when you want to approve a document then automatically you are uploading that into the electronic business processes so digitization is the lowest level which is integral part of automation and also in future also we are using that all the digitized documents are required here and scanned documents are required here uh, anything right so when it comes to the digitalization you look at there when the digitalization is there it is uh, whether it is a business process or industry process your it plus ct plus ot the modern cyber system is coming into picture it's not just it okay then the process is called digitalization then you can digitalize the operations you can digitalize uh, the products and the services and operations and if you want to digitalize the whole organization i call it as a digital transformation right i think digitalization is also a lowest level of the transformation if i say that i am digitalizing the business process that means it is a digital transformation of a business process i hope you understand automation digitization digitalization digital transformation so to summarize establish a common digital purpose and a culture within your organization decide the pace at which you want to move the digitalization bring the lean aspect into your digitalization follow the five phases what i explained and build the skills role based don't build it just with ad hoc way build role based skills the technology and business side and have a special focus on operationalization of the digital programs and projects outputs and finally imbibe, imbibe and integrate this lean digital business excellence model which i explained that will clearly answer you why digitalize how to acquire digital mindset what to digitalize what pace i want to go for digitalization and how to digitalize thank you so then then we have me and yes yes that's all the problem thank you so thanks a lot mr rao for this interesting session and i personally found the part helpful where you said that all that real transformation project should be small in size and should be considered as as an internal startup so that we can use the best of the technologies and best of the innovation thing i really love so right. there so there are a couple of questions are coming already uh, so we should move to the q and a part now so the first question would be how about digitalize to sap erp and ecc 6.0 sorry how about digitalization to sap erp ecc 6.0 see i think uh, uh, all these products in fact when i was in my old company we started uh, 10 year back huh? not now digitalizing sap solutions and digitalizing uh, oracle digitalizing microsoft and all so whatever the principles i spoke i think the 12 principles which are all there are two ways you have to do one is the product vendors themselves are adding the new features to digitalize that is one way moving to the next version of that so that you can get all the new features like uh, you want to have predictability simulations and then analytics or Uh, the smart contract based whatever it is okay 
So that is one important element if you want to upgrade, but that is expensive. For example, if you want to digitalize yourself the existing SAP software, right? So you have to look at what is that new wrappers you want to add on the top of that. Because you don't want to move to the next version of the SAP, probably that is already digital. Then you need to look at if any wrappers to be added today, the integrations are possible. You might add some probably mobile and social interface on the top of your SAP, right? So I think you need to look at the two-pronged strategy. So that again depends on the product roadmap and uh, what extent uh, you can. If it is a custom-built applications and legacy applications, it is in your hands. Then you have to look at what is your existing organization, existing architecture of your existing applications on the top of that. I want to bring the digital wrappers. Then what new architectural elements I have to bring in and all. If it is a product like SAP or Oracle, you need to look at their roadmap and you see that whether you have to move from here to there or you can build some wrappers in line with SAP strategy. Okay. So I think Mr. Narsumha Rao, this answers both of your questions. And now there is another question. Someone is asking at this one is a very commonly asked question. That is digital a coin word recently? Is it just a marketing term or is there any specific difference between the digital world and digitizing a overall business world? No, no. Can you repeat that? Someone is asking that is digital a coin word? It is, is it just a marketing coin word or is there any reality between digitizing and just being digital? Because we are already using many digital you know, applications in our uh, everyday business, right? But then why we are not calling it uh, digitization? then how come digitization is actually completely different from it? See, that's where I said, please stop saying digitization. Okay, this is the point I'm emphasizing. Digitization is just simply some scan documents, which is there for last 60, 50 or maybe before that. I think that the digitizing something means, I think there is a big library I want to digitize. That means what? You are taking the documents and then scan them and then getting into the... So your PPT document is a digitized document, Excel document is a digitized document, or some uh, website could be some digitized content and all, but that is not digitalization. Okay. So the digitalization means, as I mentioned, are you considering the human emotions into your organization to ensure that, and are you considering the optimization of human interventions where we, I, IoT is there today, technology language, if I speak, I want to optimize my human interventions. Okay, did I do that? By doing whatever digitalization you are talking, okay, today I am able to do it with 20, 100 people in my manufacturing company. I am going to probably say 90% not required because I have the robots. I have the folks which are very intelligent. So this is China has done that. So that is a digitalizing your workplace, for example. Then you take, okay, I digitalized my supply chain process. Then I will ask you, can you track it from form to form? And I don't want to fudge the data. That's where now your internet of things is coming. Blockchain is coming. Artificial intelligence, machine learning is coming. So from the ocean, for example, if anybody uh, took the fish to the restaurant table, there is a great tracking mechanism is available and there is no human intervention there. And you are able to predict whether that fish will be okay or it will get uh, probably spoiled because the temperature is not maintained as expected in the transit, right? So you are able to predict, you are able to take the decisions, you are able to track it. Okay, you are able to optimize the human interventions. That's where I told the lean digital thinking. The 12 principles, you just ask anybody if they say I have digitalized, you take that lean digital manifesto. It's like election manifesto. Oh, you digitalized? Okay, let me ask you these 12 principles. Do you have this? Your supply chain process, oh, do you have this? Do you have this? Do you have this? You have this? Oh, sorry, you have only five out of the 12. Okay, you are partially digital, right? I think that is the way we need to get into in the organization. Otherwise, we are, what is the uh, base, uh, benchmark for the digitalization? You must have something to say. Otherwise, one of the guy I went uh, to one of the government officers, he said, yeah, I can access my application through internet. It is digitized or digitalized water. No. So digitalization is giving you new capabilities. In the first slide I explained, you can work with the digital workforce. You don't need human beings today and you can predict future. You can simulate the future and you can get the recommendations automatically. That is the future. What I have to do today. I don't need to travel. I can do my virtual operations sitting at home. I can monitor my product sitting at home, a generator, and I can control that generator working, sitting at home. That is called digitalization. 
Okay. Okay. That was a clear explanation. So there is another question, and this one is quite different. Sanjeev Jain is asking that he needs some information on how to get buying from people in age group of 57 to 60 who are at the top level of digital initiative because they are so accustomed to the paper effort. Uh, sorry? Uh, the people who are in the top level management who are normally in the age group of 55 to 60. Uh -huh. how to how to how to convince them to go for digital initiative because they are accustomed to paper paper report na? So, okay i think uh, what is that see i mean this is the biggest challenge so what is that 55 to 60 years people if they if they say that we cannot go to digital first explain them what is the create a positive fear create a positive fear and if they have complacency and say that anyhow I am going to retire in the two years and three years, I will not do this, then put them in a department where they are probably not adding value. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit blunt here. So we cannot have the roadblocks. First, we have to start. That's where the inspired phase, which I mentioned in my presentation. The inspired phase is very important for every stakeholder to get buy-in, every stakeholder to give comfort, every stakeholder to remove that insecure feeling. Every stakeholder to remove that stress and strain. My God, these computers will never work. Now these people are asking me to work on that age group. They will have that tension. So you have to mentor them. It is a reverse mentoring. This is called reverse mentoring. That means you are, an young guy is mentoring the old guy. The reverse mentoring is required for them to train how to use the computers, how to use these reports, dashboards and all. If they are still not ready, Give them a give them a different position, <laughs> not in the path of fiscalization. Because five years is the only journey I have. I cannot depend on the guys who are not supporting me, right? The CEO well, has well. to be the power. Well said, well said. Okay, so with this, we are already ticking on the clock, and we come to the end of our today's session. I hope all our attendees found it useful. If there are any more questions, as I am seeing that there are lots more coming in. And if anyone is interested in a one-to-one -one interaction with our expert speaker, Mr. VSR, please feel free to mail me. Uh, team, please put my mail ID on the chat box and the QA. It's sday at cmrindia.com. You can uh, find my email ID there. So at the end, thank you, Mr. Rao, for sparing your valuable time with us. And thanks to all of our attendees joining today. I do thank hope you. everybody have found it useful. And before everybody leaves, we request you to fill up the feedback form. This time, I would like to know which topic related to the digital transformation you would like to attend uh, in the next workshop as a detailed one. We have mentioned the various areas in the feedback form already. So do fill it up and let us know which part interests you the most. And a warm thank you to, again, everyone for sparing your valuable time with us. Um, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a great week ahead. Goodbye, everyone. Yeah.